if you're just syncing up a long audio track, there's not necessarily too much to it. But if you have multiple audio tracks, there might be a need for you to have a different symbol or a different timeline. Um, that might be the case if you have um, different characters in the same um, animate document, or if you, for whatever reason, just need to have um, uh, lip sync across more than one audio file. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to duplicate a symbol intelligently so that when you have multiple audio files, you can use the same mouth shapes and make sure that you don't overwrite the work that you've done when you're syncing one audio track when you're ready to sync the other audio track. So this is not a lip sync tutorial per se. I will be showing off some of the techniques that I use for lip sync, but mainly um, the purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate how to use different audio tracks on different timelines. That's going to be helpful if you have multiple characters that you have different audio files for. And another thing that I demonstrate in this tutorial is a particular way that I nest the head and the art of the character. If you want it extra movement for the head without fussing with where the um, lip sync falls, then you're going to need to have that keyframe information on that timeline nested inside of yet another symbol. So if I double click to get inside of the editable area of this of the um, of the character, uh, you'll notice a couple of things that I've done to set this up. One of the main things that I do is in case I want some head movement, which may be animating um, on a pivot point or moving the head around, um, I'll have all of the lip sync keyframes nested within a head symbol. And so when we go to um, sync up different, um, uh, different audio files, if we need to do that, right, we'll need to duplicate that symbol. But I'll show you that in a second. Again, I just wanted to point out that the head is on its own timeline. So let me double click again to go inside of head sync. And so you'll notice the usual kind of things. There are layers for her eyes. There's a layer for her mouth. That's going to be where we're working primarily. And then there's the layer for the art, the artwork for the face. The hair is on its own layer. So let me go ahead and, and create a new layer. I'll double click that and I'll name it audio and we'll call it audio one so that we know that's what we're up against. Audio one. And let me just drag in the first of these three. When you're doing um, lip sync, by the way, you can drag that in anywhere. Okay. So that worked out nicely. That just happened to be um, the right length. Um, I did prepare some things ahead of time. That wasn't one of them, so that's cool. Uh, and let me show you how I set up my mouth shapes. So the mouth layer is unlocked, so I'm going to double click that. Um, what I do for the mouth shapes, um, I could get away with maybe five or ten mouth shapes, but what I like to do is I like to duplicate some of the mouth shapes and loop them. And by looping them, I can place something that I like to call a, a lip flap on the timeline. So let's say I don't want to sync the character's um, mouth movement very, very precisely. I can just basically stop her mouth when she's not talking and then just use a lip flap when she is talking. And that's a great way to quickly um, do a lot of lip sync in a short amount of time. And what I could do also is refine that a little bit so that if uh, her mouth needs to land on a syllable to sell what exactly she's saying, then again, I can just pause that lip flap before I stop her mouth moving completely. Anyway, let me just show you how that looks. So right now it's on a single frame. And since the audio starts here, I'll start that lip flap on frame 20. So in the playback options, I'll go to loop. And I'll just kind of guesstimate where she is um, not talking. I'll add a layer comment called hold and I'll just duplicate that where everywhere I think that she's going to be pausing. And then I'll duplicate these 
everywhere I think she's going to need to start talking again. Let me call that done. And let me go back out of here. And here's, um, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So we have three audio files. We can call that done, right? That's cool. So what do we do if we have two other audio tracks? Um, so we want to duplicate some of the symbols, um, but we want to be intelligent about what we actually duplicate. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate these layers. Um, as of right now, this is just two of the same exact thing, so we haven't gotten anywhere. But if we right click here and duplicate the entire symbol, let's call it lip sync 2. All right. And let me hide the other and hide and lock the other layer. Let me go inside of this new duplicate layer. So this is female sync two. Um, so this is nice. This is exactly the same thing as the other. However, this symbol here would need to be duplicated as well. And let me do this in the library. Head sync. We're going to call that head sync one. And that should update this file to head sync one which if we go in here and edit it right we have that first audio file which we do we don't want to change so we'll need to duplicate two sets of symbols du duplicate this symbol for head sync 2 now when we check in our library we have two of these files and we need that arrangement because in case we want to have our head bobbing around and doing things we can keep all of our lip sync movement and then we'll need to have the actual timeline that has all of the keyframes with the mouse shapes. So we're not looking at that now, so let's double click to go inside of there. Head sync 2. So because we duplicated, this is duplicated it. This is exactly the same audio from the other file. Let's go ahead and remove that. And conveniently here we can add that same add that other audio file here. I was going to say another thing that I want to do real quick. I hope this isn't confusing. I'm going to go back up one level. I'm going to change that background color to something else. And that's just going to give us a cue that um, we are in a different, <clears throat> that we're in a different symbol. Okay. All right. So I'm also going to remove all of these keyframes here and shorten the timeline. And I think I'm just going to have her do a lip flap um, for the whole the whole track. Again, this is not um, specifically a lip sync tutorial, um, so I'm just going to have that play back as a loop. All right, all right. So let's call that done. Let me go back out here. Um, so I changed the background color to green. And again, let me let me um, quickly demonstrate this other idea. So I've double nested the um, the symbol that has all of the keyframe information in its own symbol and that's so that if I want to I can move this head around I'm taking kind of a rabbit trail but I think this is going to be helpful so I'm going to add a classic tween and something very important to do is to check the sync button and now if I just place some different keyframes down Notice that it's going to it's going to maintain that frame um, no matter where that key is. So if I slide this to the right and I check the art, it's updated to 74, which is exactly where it's at on the timeline. <clears throat> if I move that keyframe closer here and I check the art, now it's updated it to 53. So I don't have to manually type in which frame that is because the sync box is checked and if the if the first if sync is checked on the first keyframe and you have to uh, select a keyframe in the timeline to see that then everywhere where you add a keyframe that sync um, box is going to be checked all right so the in the case of the head dip here if I want that to happen a little sooner, I can move that up. Okay. So, so
So I don't have to make any adjustments to the actual lip, uh, the keyframes on the, uh, the lip sync. I'm just animating the head and I can actually finesse this and fine tune this as much as I want because all of the keyframe information is within this symbol. Let's duplicate this one more time. Oh, actually, hold up. Let's duplicate the layer, duplicate layer. I'm just gonna call it, rename these guys layer three, layer two, and then we start it with layer one. I'm gonna lock and hide those. Um, so we haven't duplicated this yet. We're gonna end up with three female sync files, which is the whole character. And then we're gonna end up eventually with three head syncs. And the idea here is this is where our keyframe information is. If I double click that, this is where our keyframe information is for the actual um, lip sync for the mouth. All right, so let's go back out of here. And we can duplicate the symbol either from the library or from the timeline. Um, I love doing it from the timeline because it will keep all the art and all of the keyframes that is that are inside the art in the exact same place. So from the context menu, you can right click, duplicate symbol, frame sync, three. Um, depending on how tricky your production is, you may actually want to name that whatever the audio file is. But again, for this demo, I'm just going to name it three. So that's updated here. And then we'll double click that. I'll go ahead and remove the tweens and the keyframe information. Shift F6. Right click the head. And then we'll duplicate this symbol. We'll also call it sync three. And when we go in here, this is actually our keyframe information for the third audio file. Again, you can switch that audio either from the timeline, select a f the main, you know, the first frame in the timeline where the audio is placed, and you can remove it here, or you can go to the lot to the library and drag it you need to make sure that the right layer is selected. For example, if the hair layer were selected and I dragged it over here, notice that it's going to add it to that layer. We don't want that normally. I don't know. I, I usually like to have an, it, the, the, um, I usually like to have a layer dedicated just for the audio. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that. I didn't think about that earlier. This last audio file is a little longer, so it's not that much longer. Good. I'll end that at five seconds. All right, again, for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna leave her um, lip flap on. Um, she pauses just briefly there, so I will add a frame hold here. And let's see how that looks. So I'll extend that a little bit. Life, all right. All right, like I said, I'm going to resist the um, the urge to be very precise with the lip sync because this is not a lip sync tutorial per se. Um, again, I'm just I just wanted to mainly demonstrate. <coughs> excuse me. Um, how to use intelligently duplicated symbols for multiple um, uh, audio files. I was going to say, you guys know how it is when you're doing lip sync, you have to listen to stuff like a thousand times. It doesn't bother me, but <laughs> if you're in the room with someone who doesn't understand what you're doing, they're like, why are you listening to it so many times? Um, and depending on what, what you're going to do as far as exporting um, this, you wouldn't be able to export the file like this anyway. So you need to figure out um, how you're going to break that up. You could, you could, um, select the layer and then move all of this um, you know past the point where this stops and you you could export them like that or you could guide out these upper layers export it and then um, you know guide out the other layer if you wanted to export all this so again um, depending on what your purposes are you will need to um, make some adjustments to the timeline when you're finally ready to export this for your actual video project. 
All right, and that's it for now. I hope you found the information in this tutorial helpful. Until next time, this is Law Out.